How can I get good at Power BI or good enough? This is by far the number one question I get. Now, people ask this question to me in various ways. Avi, when will I be good enough to get a job in Power BI? Uh, when will I be good enough to leave my job and become a Power BI consultant? When will I feel confident in Power BI? I don't want to be stumbling in the dark. Like, where is the light switch with this thing? They talk about how Power BI waters run swift and deep, and they're always afraid to step in, afraid of making a fool of themselves, afraid others will find out the truth about them, that they don't really know Power BI. They ask me, when will I be good enough? When will I be not afraid? Welcome to The Power On Show, where we talk Power BI and beyond sometimes way beyond. But our goal is always to help you create a successful Power BI career and a life of freedom. I'm your host, Avi Singh. All right, my friends, so let's talk about this. First of all, we'll st let's start with why, why is it important? Why do people care so much about being good or good enough? And you should too. Well, the first part is obvious that yes, being good uh, at Power BI can lead you to success in your career, whether that is as an employee or consultant or with a side gig. Power BI is an amazing tool and it's a really hot tool right now. And yes, it can lead you to success in your job. It can lead you to, uh, you know, be able to leave your job, leave your nine to five and become an independent consultant. And a career is a big part of our life, isn't it? Think about the number of hours we spend focused on our work. Well, I know for me, it's more than the time I spend with my family. It's a big part of a life and having a successful career can lead to a successful life. That's why everyone should care about it. If you're focused on Power BI, you should care about becoming good enough. Now, besides that, the truth is that nobody likes feeling like a rookie, right? Nobody likes feeling like a beginner. And of course, the last thing, which is, man, we, we don't want to make a fool of ourselves, right? I mean, we are social creatures and yeah, just looking good in front of our friends, colleagues, bosses, mom, <laughs> that's important. So yeah, you should absolutely want to be good at Power BI and feel like you're good enough, like you got this. Now think about what it's going to mean for you to have that feeling. How would you feel? How does that feel? Just close your eyes and think about it for a second. If you were good enough, how does that feel? But the bigger question is, what would that then make possible for you? What doors in your career or life would open? What chances would you be willing to take that you're too afraid to take right now? That's the bigger question. So that's why we're talking about it. And we are going to talk about it in uh, three sections. The first one, we'll talk about the problem, which is the learning paradox. In the second part, we'll talk about the solution, the pyramid theory. And lastly, I'm going to share a really surprising thing that I found out about the solution of pyramid theory. Let's get started. Part one, the problem, learning paradox. So here you are at the beginning of your Power BI journey. Now I meet uh, a lot of folks at the starting of the journey. They talk to me and say, like, hey, Avi, I'm, I'm just a rookie. I'm just getting started. And I can see them. They are at or near the bottom of this pyramid, right? And they're looking up. And like, oh boy, it would be so nice to climb up on this pyramid. And, and they can see the top and they want to get there. 
Now, we often put somebody on the top, like a real person. Now, some of the folks that I talk to, they put me at the top. <laughs> and yes, that is flattering. <laughs> and um, yeah, so they're like, oh, Avi, man, you're so good. How can I be just a little bit like that, right? Please. Now, of course, some people are smarter. <laughs> they don't put me on the top. They're like, yeah, yeah, Avi is okay, but he's going to be my pit stop, right? <laughs> and they see somebody else at the top of their Power BI pyramid. And hey, I'm the same. I'm no different than you. I do have someone else at the top of my Power BI pyramid. So I look up and I see those guys at the top and I feel like such a fool. I feel like I know nothing. I am nothing. I read their stuff and I can't even understand half of it. And that's on a good day. How dare I call myself Barbie I Pro? I bet people laugh behind my back. Well, there goes Barbie I Pro who doesn't actually know Barbie I. Ha ha. Oh well. But this is not about me. This is about you. So again, you're at the start of a journey and maybe you are a bit excited, but yeah, there's certainly fear. And then, yeah, you're looking up at the top of the pyramid and you're like, how do I get to the top? And, and you feel like, yeah, what you need to do is, is just, yeah, learn more. And, and hey, learning isn't bad. There's nothing wrong with that, but there is a problem with looking at things this way. And that's this. It's a paradox. It's a trap that you will never escape. And this is the reason why. What you feel like is the top or the finish line for you isn't really the top or the finish line. It's just a mirage. It's an illusion. Think about your life. How many times have you done that to yourself? Right? I mean, I remember just, you know, so just step back. Let's not talk about Barbie. Let's talk about life. Right? I remember when I was in school, I was like, oh my God, college, college, college. Oh my God, college. Then I got into college. Right? That was my finish line, right? But did it end there? No. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Job, 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 right? And and yes, there was a side story is that about girl, girl, girl. Yeah, I did get the girl. I did get the job. But um, was that the finish? No. I mean, next thing, a promotion, 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 right? And, and on and on it went. And that same thing happens with learning. And that is the trap. That is a learning paradox. The paradox is the more you learn, the less you know. The more you learn, the less you know. How is that even possible? Avi, what are you smoking? Just because you're not on video, not on YouTube, doesn't mean you could be, you know, smoking a joint while doing these things. Guys, I'm not smoking anything. That is true. Now, if you think about it, the more you learn, the less you know. That's because imagine a ship and you see the horizon out there. You're sailing out in the sea and you see the horizon, but wouldn't it be foolish to think that the horizon is a finish line? But we do that constantly, not just with learning Power BI, but with our life. We look at the horizon and say, oh, yeah, that's it. If I just got there, if I just got there, if I just got good enough, if that, you know, I'll be fine, I'll be great, I'll be this, I'll be that, right? But it never happens. Your ship moves forward, the horizon expands, right? I mean, you know, you, let's say you do get good at Power BI. Are you going to feel that way? Well, not for long, because then you realize, dang it, there is power apps and there is uh, power flow and, um, and, and then there is Azure and there is a machine language and artificial intelligence and Python and R and on and on and on and on and on. The more you learn, the less you know. That's the trap. That's the paradox. So you can keep looking at the top but you will never get there, my friend. That is a trap. That's the paradox. How do we get out of it? And the solution couldn't be simpler. Part two, the solution of pyramid theory. So close your eyes again. And again, imagine yourself on that pyramid. Now I know sometimes it feels like you're at the bottom. But most likely you're not. I mean, think about even if you just discovered Power BI and it blew your mind, you 
check it out and you're like, whoa, this is incredible, right? Even if you're there, then look below. How many people are there who haven't even heard of Power BI, who are still trapped in that Excel hell, in that data dungeon, just doing, cranking out that wheel, right? Churning out reports, day in and day out. I've lived that life, my friend. That's not a fun life. That's the dungeon, data dungeon. You're better off than them. Now, of course, if you have taken a few steps forward, if you can do some and count rows, if you can create a relationship in Power BI, if you can click at data and pull some data in, just basic steps. Now they're, you're, 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 you're further ahead in your journey and there are more people below you who have just discovered Power BI. So it really doesn't matter where you are. There are always going to be people a few steps behind you. And those are the people you can help. And those are the companies you can help. Because remember, companies are made up of people. People just like you and me. And that is the simple answer. Instead of looking up, what if we looked down to the people below us? Again, close your eyes, my friend, and imagine there's somebody there who a few steps below and they're, they're struggling a bit. What if you reached out? Imagine your hand reaching out and you're telling them, hey, hold on to me. I want you to see yourself grabbing their arm and pulling them up. That's the answer. Now I'm going to tell you why you are the only person who can help them and why it's a good thing that you are near the bottom of the pyramid. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're like, I want to go up. It's like, no, no, no. It's, it's good at the bottom, my friend. Good at the bottom, right? So let's talk about the first one. So for this one, we're going to go back to the classroom. Think about your school days and let's say you're sitting in the algebra class and there's a teacher up there. He's talking on and on about algebra and equations and this and that. And you can't understand anything. And you're sitting there just mystified. I'm like, what is he saying? None of this makes sense. I must be an idiot, right? Now, now this teacher, he, he knows this stuff. He has mastered it, in fact, years ago, decades ago. Heck, he even got a PhD. He wrote a research paper on algebra. Who does that? He is an expert. But here you are sitting in the classroom, maybe at the back bench, and you're just struggling. And then they give you a test. They give you an equation to solve. And as you are just sitting there with a blank sheet of paper, your friend next to you just nudges, nudges you with his elbow and says, hey, I know what you're struggling with. I was stuck with the same thing. Here's how I got over the roadblock. Let me show you. So think about it. Oftentimes, you know, that expert sitting at the podium in front of the class at the top of the pyramid is not the best person to help. It's the one sitting next to you. And that's the opportunity you have. Let's go back to the pyramid analogy. Again, close your eyes and imagine yourself being on an actual pyramid. There's somebody below you, just a few steps, who need your help. And you're right there. You can reach out to them, hold their hand, pull them up. Now think about the person sitting at the way top. What are they going to do? The best thing that they can do is yell at them. You know, I don't know, be the cheerleader or something. Say, hey, yeah, you can do it. But they can't hold their hand. They can't empathize with them. They don't understand. They, they, they left those steps long ago. Now, what does this really mean? <laughs> so let's take, let's take, let's talk about Power BI. So imagine an organization that is 
stuck in Excel hell currently, right? They got sheets flying everywhere, kind of the old school Excel, right? Not the new stuff with Power Query and data modeling, right? They're doing stuff the old way and it's chaos and they feel it, it's painful. Can the expert help them? Is that who they need? Or maybe you, who figured this out not too long ago, can go there and tell them, hey, I know what you're going through. We went through the same thing. Yep, I, I know the challenges you're facing right now, and I know what's going to happen next. I know when you start stepping into Power BI, it's going to feel scary. It's going to feel harder. But guess what? I'm here. I'm here to help. It does get better. It just takes a little bit of effort, but it's well worth it. Let me show you. This is what we did. Who do you think is the best person who can help them? It's not the expert sitting at the top of the pyramid. It's you. You know their pain, you know their problems, and the solution, and all of it is fresh in your mind. Go out there and help them. All right, let's talk about the other part, which I said, it's actually better at the bottom. Now that one is simple. Again, imagine that pyramid. Where is the pyramid the broadest? It's at the bottom. That's where the most people are, companies are, right? I mean, yeah, only few can get to the top or near the top. It gets narrower the higher you go. If you're near the top, again, remember, you are in the best position to help the people and companies just a few steps below you. And that means the higher you go, the narrower it gets. If you're near the top, there's a very narrow band of companies that need that level of expertise. But if you're near the bottom, that's where a lot of companies are. And those are the ones who need your help. Now, I don't want you to feel that, you know, I've, I've conquered it all. That, oh, Avi is past this stuff and that's why he's teaching it. Well, I've struggled with not good enoughness too. In fact, when I started teaching Power BI, I went through the same doubts. I went through the same struggle. Am I good enough? Who am I to be doing this? Right? They're far... Uh, there, there are lots of people who are, who are far smarter than, than I am. And then again, when I started to offer uh, my Power BI consultant program, because I realized that just having Power BI skills, that doesn't necessarily lead to success. And that's what I wanted for my members. I wanted them to have success in their career and in their lives. And I went about to solve that. But again, I struggle with the same thing. I struggle with the not good enoughness and ask myself that, hey, who am I to be doing this, right? I mean, there are lots of consultants who are bigger than I am. They're these big, huge consulting companies. Shouldn't they be the ones talking about it? Now, my question to you is, where do you think I would be right now if I had waited? to feel good enough before I even started, before I teach, started teaching or helping anybody, any company, any, any of my students. And of course, what makes me really proud to see is all of our members in a program going through the same thing. They, they fight the same fight, my friend. It's familiar to all of us. So I mentioned Greg Berg helping specialty coffee companies, Andrew Ali helping faith-based nonprofits, Frank Wendelden, healthcare finance, Ian Bowman, construction companies, and on and on and on. The list is so long. Where would they be if they waited to feel good enough? They didn't wait to feel good enough to start helping others. They started helping others and that's how they got good at what they do because they kept getting better and better as they helped more and more people and companies. The real question is, 
Where do you want to be? Part 3. The surprising result of pyramid theory. All right, my friends, let's bring it home. So you've talked about the problem, which was the pyramid as well, right? But the fact that we kept looking at the top, we talked about the solution, which was simple. Just look below and help the people who are just a few steps below. What I want to show you next are some really surprising results, or I don't know, maybe not so surprising that I found by experimenting with this and not just by myself, but of course, all of our members that are in our uh, Power BI programs and Power BI consultant programs, it was, it was, yeah, it was, you know, they, they were the guinea pigs too, but, but we went with this approach. Now, what I saw for myself and them was that the first thing it does is it gets rid of the anxiety. Right. That, so again, that, you know, she loves me, she loves me not, that kind of thing. Like, oh, I, I'm good enough, I'm not good enough, I'm good enough, I'm not good enough, am I good enough, I'm not good enough. Right, that anxiety, you can put that away. Simply because the focus is now not on you. I mean, as long as you keep yourself the focus, like me, 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 I, 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 you're constantly going to be stuck in that, in that loop, in that trap. But when you put that away, it's like, hey, it's not about me. It's about them. It's about others. It's about the person who's drowning. It's about the person who needs my help. That anxiety goes away. You don't have to do anything. It's just, you know, just, yeah, now you focus on helping that other person and helping them the best way you can. And the other part that I experienced and noticed was that you can actually enjoy the journey. And I know it sounds cliche, like, oh, it's all about the journey, but isn't there all it is? I mean, there's no finish line. I mean, learning Power BI is like learning violin when are you, or any musical instrument. When are you done? You're never done. But what if you truly enjoyed that journey? And I think just shifting your mindset this way, looking below you at the pyramid, stop looking at the top constantly. Maybe check once in a while, that's okay. But we don't be fixated. So that's the second impact. That I saw. And the third one is again, that one is, it surprised me when I first saw it. But now that I think about it, uh, the more that I've thought about it, it's, I don't think it's surprising at all. So let's think about an experiment, right? A thought experiment. Did I meet um, two versions of you, right? And two versions of you, and one version doesn't listen to this podcast. Right, so they're like, "Oh man, I'm not. You know, I, I need to be good enough, Barbie." I, they lock themselves in a the room. They're like, "I'm going to learn everything. I'm going to read all the books. I'm going to watch all the videos. I'm going to take all the courses and all of that." And they do all of that, all of that, right? And do they get better? Sure, they do. But the other person says, "Hmm, I don't know all of Barbie I for sure. I don't know if I ever will." But I do know a little bit. I wonder who is out there who needs my help, who I can go out there and help them. And they do that. And they keep doing that. Now, I'm not saying that they never open any book, they never join any courses. But again, think about the force that's driving them. Instead of this, this negative anxiety, I'm not good enough, right? That, that vacuum, that void driving them. They're being driven because they're full. Right? I mean, the heart is full of, of this gratitude and joy for this journey, for this opportunity to learn and help others, help others and learn. Now, let's bring back these two personas, right? These two identities. And let's say we meet back after six months. Where do you think they would be in terms of their Power BI progress skill level? Where would they be on the pyramid? The person who's focused on themselves as like, me, 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 am I good enough? Not good enough. Let me learn more, learn more, learn more, get better. And then I'll help somebody. Would they be farther up the pyramid? Would they know more? Or would it be the other person who stepped into the arena, helped other people? Did they fall on their faces? Oh, many times, but they got up. They figured it out. They were honest. They didn't pretend to be the expert. They said, yep, hey, I don't know this stuff, but I'm willing to figure it out for you, right? I'll, I'll leave no stone unturned. 
And that's what I call directed learning. And it's such a powerful mode of learning versus just being in this void and, like, and chasing this elusive goal of getting to the finish line of becoming good enough. That's the irony. The fastest way to move up the pyramid is to look down and up those. Right? So it, as long as you keep looking up and keep fixating about this idea of, oh, how can, I, how can I move? How can I move to the top? The moment you let go of that, that's when your journey to the top really takes off. All right, my friends. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure to share with your loved ones. Share with people you care. Now, um, in the next episode, we're going to talk about something else. Now, we talked about how you should help the people below you, a few steps below you in the pyramid. But as we said, I mean, that can be a lot of people, especially, right? So bottom of the pyramid, that's where it's the broadest. Should you really try to help everyone? Eh. In the next episode, we'll talk about how niching down can actually help you go big in your power BI career. I'll see you next time. Until then, power on. Still there? Well, maybe I'll share the story of this podcast, which um, is turning out to be about 20, 30 minutes. But the truth is I've spent probably, I don't know, 10 to 20 hours, maybe more, more than I think I care to admit. And I'll also admit that uh, at many times I've been gripped with this fear that I'm just being such an amateur and su doing such a shoddy job and I should just order a whole new equipment, a new microphone, a new everything, new recording this and studio phone panels, what, and just start over. Not to mention that uh, this podcast, I only had bullet points and I just spoke and there are a lot of filler words. And I, every time I hear the recording, I notice them. And I also, I actually started trying to transcribe what I had said and cleaning it all up and re-recording it. But I didn't, and I hope that was okay with you. And I remember that uh, when my uh, son was born, her first child, we were so excited about it, and I painted his room blue. And everybody walked in, and they said, oh, this looks great, this looks beautiful. And it did look beautiful, but since I had painted it, and it was the first time I had done anything like that, I was aware of every single imperfection, every smudge here, every missed brush stroke or s something wrong. I, I noticed all of them and they glared at me. And that's what's happening with me with this podcast. I look at it and I just see the imperfections. But most people didn't. <laughs> so part of me is afraid that, you know, I'm going to let us get an email from you saying, Avi, oh, you're podcast production was really shoddy. I expected better from you. But I'm also hoping that you would not see those flaws. <laughs> and <laughs> you would forgive me my own feelings of not good enoughness. And you would forgive me for uh, being me and putting myself out there. It is to being not good enough. Cheers, folks, and power on.